Every once in a while, something will go wrong on your computer. And this is true no matter what operating system you're using, what piece of software you're using. Sometimes things just break, or you don't know how to do something, or you get an error, or any number of things can happen. It's just the way of doing business. It's the way of life, really. And when that bad thing happens, or you encounter a situation where you don't know how to do something, your number one solution to that problem is always heading to a browser and Googling it or using DuckDuckGo or Search or whatever browser search engine you're using. You go search for it on the internet and that is the proper course of action. You should always search for the issue first. Don't head to a forum and ask a question because you're just going to get RTFM'd, but search for the issue first because there's a really good chance that if you've encountered a problem, someone else has also encountered that problem and they'll either have already asked the question and gotten a solution, or they will have provided the solution in a blog or a subreddit or a forum someplace. They'll have provided an answer somewhere, and you can just go reap the benefits of them having also had something go wrong in their life. Now, the problem is, is that the internet is a vast, vast place. It's a really hard to navigate space if you don't know where to look. Now, obviously, we have tools like Google and DuckDuckGo and stuff like that to facilitate our access to all of this information. And the problem with that isn't that those tools aren't amazing in various ways, but really that those tools require some skills to use. Now, most people who use the internet have encountered Google, I would say. That's probably a fair and safe bet. But not everyone who messes around on the internet, has the skills to properly Google things when it comes to searching for problems. So what I thought I'd do today is talk about a few tips and tricks, if you will, on how to properly search for solutions to your problems when it comes to Linux. So the first one is simply describing it accurately. Now, this is a problem and probably the biggest problem overall that people encounter when things go wrong. How do you describe something if you don't have an error code? If it's just something that you're experiencing, like a, a visual glitch or something like that, it can be very hard to describe. And it's not even that it's hard to describe. It's hard to describe in the way other people have described it. So how one person might describe screen tearing might be in, you know, in one way, and how you describe screen tearing might happen in another way. And, and because the solution to your problem may be described differently than how you would describe it, it makes searching for it harder. And this is especially true when you're searching for things that aren't explicitly error messages, right? If you have an error message, it's obviously really easy to just plop that error message into Google and find out what the solution is. If there is one, it's probably going to be e just pop up as the first result. When you don't have that situation where you're trying to describe what's actually going on, how everyone describes something is going to be different. So the best advice I can give you here is to describe it in multiple ways if the first way you describe it doesn't work. So it seems obvious, but use different words. If your first attempt fails, don't give up and head on over to the Arch forums. Instead, search a second time using slightly different words. Now, usually Google and all the search engines are pretty good at giving you results that are close to what you meant, even if it's not exactly what you typed. So there's a good chance if you were close to describing it properly, you'll still probably get to the best result. But if you don't, reword your search so that it's in a slightly different way. Use synonyms and things like that if you can, or describe a smaller, more specific part of the error. So if you're experiencing font problems, don't search for something really, really broad. Like just, hey, I'm having font issues on KDE doesn't really help anything because there's obviously many things that can go wrong with fonts on KDE. But if you were to search for specifically, hey, I'm experiencing small fonts on KDE, it's a good chance that you'll find a solution more than if you were searching for a broad one. Also, shout out to Hip Dad. That was his problem and he inspired this video. So if, if you are having issues with searching and describing, the best advice I can give you is search it in multiple different ways. If the first way doesn't work, change the words just a little bit and see if that works. And if 
you are still not getting a proper answer, narrow it down a little bit to the point where you're specifically searching for the most narrow problem that you're experiencing instead of something that is really broad because a lot of times narrowing it down is going to give you a more specific search result. That's the first tip. The second tip that I can give you is don't discount site-specific searches. So a lot of times people get very focused on Google because Google is all powerful in terms of search, right? It's the best search engine out there for the vast majority of search queries. It's just is, even though we hate Google and we don't want to use Google, it does seem to do the best job when it comes to searching. But people tend to see that and think, well, if Google didn't give me an answer, maybe the answer doesn't exist online. That's probably maybe true, but don't necessarily think that it's always true. Don't be afraid to go to site-specific searches and actually search there. So go to Reddit. Go to r slash Linux questions and search through that and see if the question has been asked before. Now, Google does troll all of those sites, so a lot of times those results will show up in a Google search, but... Uh, they'll also bury them because they have a tendency to pack all of the Reddit links and results together, so you may miss them. So if you think that your question might have been asked on Reddit someplace, go search Reddit. Don't just limit yourself to Google. Search Reddit, search through Substack, search through the Ubuntu, uh, help Ubuntu forum, search through the Arch Linux forums, do those specifically, and you may have a different result than if you just limit yourself to Google. The third one has to do a lot with what we talked about in the first tip, and that is honing your descriptive capabilities so that you can describe what's going on and therefore craft a proper search query. This is a talent that will develop over time the longer you've used Google and or use a search engine really and this is something specifically that's going to be harder when you're dealing with something that you're unfamiliar with so if you are a new Linux user you may not know what's what you don't know all the terms you don't know what really you don't know anything when it comes to Linux if you're a brand new user or it's possible at least that you don't know what you're talking about so how are you supposed to craft a sufficient search query if you don't know the proper terms or any of that stuff. Well, the best thing you can do is sit down and with a pad of paper, I'm, we're going back to the Stone Age here, and write down what you were doing when the problem occurred. This has the potential to help you craft your search query because you can use the points that you write down to narrow down the description for your particular problems. So let's just say, for example, you're having a problem setting wallpaper on Ubuntu. Now, this is a very simple problem, obviously. You could just search for can't set wallpaper on Ubuntu and you'd probably get an answer or a solution. But let's just say you didn't know what a wallpaper was. I don't know. I mean, <laughs> it's a silly example, but let's just say that, that that's true. You don't know what a wallpaper is. You don't know how to use the settings application. So you sit down and you write down what were you were doing when you were trying to set the wallpaper. So, so you probably open up the settings application and you tried to load in the wallpaper section in the settings application and it wouldn't pop up. So you could then from that information form a search query saying settings panel will not load wallpapers something like that. And obviously, the more complex the issue you have, the more information you're going to get from the things that you've written down there. So you'll have the information you need to hone in on the exact search query that you're going to need. And then if that still doesn't work, you can try rewording it a little bit because you still have some information in there. The more specific information you have in your search query, the better off you'll be simply because that's the more information will allow Google or whatever search engine to find better results. Like I said at the beginning, the broader your search query, the less good your results are going to be, especially when it comes to finding technical assistance. The last tip that I can give you is a simple one, and I've already talked about it, and that is if you have an error code, use it. Now, I've talked in the past about the five steps you should take if you are troubleshooting, and one of those is viewing the logs, and I will link to that video in the video description. Basically, what I talk about there is that there are logs of basically everything on your system. Everything It's basically like a black box in a plane. It records everything that goes on your system. When there's an error, it writes it to the logs. So if you go view those logs, you will find an error code somewhere, and that right there is the holy grail, the best possible search query you'll ever have. Copy and paste that search query into your favorite search engine, 
that's going to be the best thing you'll, they'll ever happen to you if, if you have to search for technical assistance. Because if you have an error code, it's tailor-made for searching. So don't ignore the logs. If you have a problem, chances are there's an error code somewhere in those logs, and you can take that error code, plug it into Google, and possibly find your solution. And it's way better than having to come up with a search query on your own. So that is the last tip that I have to give you. And I'm sure there are probably other ones that I could give. If you have thoughts on how to properly search for help when it comes to Linux and open source stuff, leave those in the comment section below. I'd love to hear from you. You can follow me on Mastodon or Odyssey. Those links will be in the video description. You can support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash linuxcast. Links for Libera Pay and YouTube are also in the video description if you want to support me there. Thanks to everybody who does support me on Patreon and YouTube. You guys are all absolutely amazing without you the channel just would not be anywhere near where it is right now so thank you so very very much for your support i truly do appreciate it thanks everybody for watching i'll see you next time